The way we started drifting was we were watching Initial D one day back then at our old house and um, at the time I was into you know like Skylines and Supras like high horsepower just like one gum racing just going 200 miles an hour you know super high horsepower cars and I, I couldn't care any less about drifting at the time. I knew what it was about but I didn't really care much about it. When I first started um, it was just me and my dad. Um, at first we wanted to do rally, so we took uh, 86 Corolla, which we coincidentally happened to have, and we took it to a dry lake bed about two hours north of LA. And um, you know, this dry lake bed is off-road, so no one really checked for any license or anything. And I, at the time I was still 13, so obviously I didn't have a license. We'd just be out there for a couple hours, you know, goofing off, sliding around corners, pretending like we knew what we were doing, but I honestly didn't know what I was doing. I'm just having a great time and that's really what kept me going was this concept of having fun. Just have fun all the time, you know, forget about the stress, just go out there and have fun. And I still get that feeling every time I get behind the wheel. In that sense, my dad was the one person that kind of, I guess, opened the doors for me to be in this industry, in this world of drifting and uh, competitive uh, motorsports. So through that connection, I was given the opportunity to run Pikes Peak Hill Climb, you know, the Long Beach Grand Prix, Celebrity Pro Race. It was just all through one night of watching Initial Deal with my dad. Hitting the first and second outer zone and maintaining good proximity of that last inside clip. That ready performance. SR by Toyota 86 is getting all that neon shadow that is Matt Field. Look at that pass that front clip as the sun is setting. Wow. Nice job by McCory. Like to see get a little bit higher on the wall there and look how close Ken Gucci is. Right now, Forsberg transitions to this last inside clip as Ken tries to attack and nearly makes contact with his door. Follow my dad around our garage at our old place and just kind of play around the cars while he was working on them or modifying them. And at that time, he had a very old a Datsun B110 Sunny that he was working on. And uh, I thought it was the coolest car ever. Um, but just being around him and being around cars was my childhood. Uh, my dad's passion for cars was around rally. So our coworker was like, yeah, there's this place called El Mirage Dry Lake Bed halfway from LA to Vegas. Uh, I would spend hours and hours in the car just doing donuts, figure eights, um, drifting around the bushes, making my own trails, pretending to call some crazy rally driver, taking some jumps. But we did that about once a week for, I don't know, a whole year, maybe two years. Yeah, that was pretty much the start of drifting for me. Um, so, in the early days of Formula Drift, I uh, was driving as my own team. So it was Gucci Auto, uh, which is my father's company. Um, so that was the team that I was driving with. Um, and our main sponsor at the time was uh, Falcon Tires and Rotora, which was a aftermarket brake manufacturer. So we had formed a team, did about a year and a half, two years in Formula Drift until um, Reese Millen actually approached me and said that, hey, there might be a huge opportunity for you to drive with a uh, manufacturer, an automotive manufacturer, so domestic manufacturer, um, and I think you should take it. And, you know, being the, being the naive little kid I was, I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll take everything. I'm, I'm so badass. Like, I, I can do it. I should be able to do it. Um, and that manufacturer was Ford Racing. So I was the very first... Uh, driver for Ford Racing in Formula Drift as a 16-year-old uh, kid, I really had to take away something from that experience and it was you know, going into a whole different manufacturer after that with Sound Racing, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I was just this naive little kid that didn't really know 
what I really wanted. Was it, you know, like becoming a better driver or was it just enjoying this fame, that newfound flame that I, fame that I had? Um, but yeah, I was, I was just young and dumb. There, there was a point where I was, uh, you know, graduating high school, going into college. And, you know, when I was in college, I was already a professional driver in Formula Drift. So um, I knew as I graduated high school, okay, so I have two choices right now. Um, I can take a step back from driving and go into a four-year college and really get my education on, or I can sort of, you know, pursue my career as a professional driver while taking, you know, online classes or like Sunday classes, the weekend classes, and um, cut my education time in half. And I knew, or had a feeling, it was a gut feeling that if I didn't take this opportunity to pursue a career in driving at the time, then I probably never have that chance again. And Thankfully, my parents were supportive, extremely supportive of what I wanted to do. And they were like, hey, you know what? Uh, it's your life. It's your career path. What do you want to do? Like, you choose what you want to do. We'll always have your back 100%. And so I was like, okay, like, easy choice. I'm going to go follow my dreams and become a professional drifter and uh, just see where it takes me. But I knew early on that, you know, if it was going to school or driving, I'm going to go driving. Drifting is such a... Uh, it's a different type of motorsport, you know, you don't have laps to make up your mistakes. The level of driving has Im increased and improved so much, uh, not year by year, but event by event, um, starting from the earlier days that um, I started to find myself being left behind from a lot of the drivers and there were times where I felt, I guess, depressed that I wasn't, you know, keeping up with the top drivers. And that wasn't only because I wasn't improving as a driver, but it was also because the series was growing. I mean, all these drivers were coming in with big sponsors and it was becoming a little bit more serious. Um, it was becoming more about the competition. It was becoming more about who's, you know, who's the better driver out there, you know, who's gonna be the next best thing. Like, what's the next best trend? Is it backwards entries? Is it, you know, riding the wall? Is it, you know, the tandem battles? But there's just so much going on in such a short amount of time that I found myself really struggling to hold on to what I really wanted to become. At the end of the day, like, I still loved doing what I was doing. Like, I loved drifting so much that I, I didn't want to just fall back. So um, I, I had to really fight within myself to find that fuel to become the better driver. And, and I did, like, I still do today. You know, I still fight myself and really take a step back and look at the whole picture like okay so what am I missing to become someone like Frederick Osborne like what am I lacking that's not helping me become a driver like James Dean like am I humble enough am I welcoming enough am I really doing the right things to really get all the elements necessary to become a championship contender so that's been my mentality for like the past five six years now just just finding that key piece to become the best that I could be like if you had asked me 15 years ago, where do you see yourself? I would have never imagined that I would be here sitting in front of uh, Gretty Racing, Gretty Performance Products, which is a company that I looked up to so much as a little kid growing up, being a huge fan of cars, and, and then driving for a manufacturer like Toyota Racing, Falcon Tire, like that would have been a world outside of my imagination. And I gotta admit that these past 15 years has gone by like, like that but I had fun doing it I have zero regrets like I mentioned earlier and um, I want to continue to do this I want to continue to reach my ultimate destination of becoming a champion in Formula Drift but at the same time I also want to remember to have fun while doing it and you know what I take away from each battle uh, what I take away from each qualifying run or practice run or each event is that at the end of the day, I'm still smiling. I still love doing what I do. I love drifting, and I'm extremely passionate about driving, drifting, the whole series, um, the fans, and very appreciative of everyone who's helped me, uh, help me become the person I am today.